172 episode. I think this is 35, but I could be wrong, of the Spring Snake Lake podcast. My name is Sophie. I am coming to you from my office at work. <laughs> because, uh, yeah, I just couldn't think of any other time that I can do this because it's summer holidays and my small person is at work. Is it work? Is it home? And I'm doing this on my phone. So we'll see what the sound's like. Um, it's a short update from me. Uh, I know I haven't been around for a while. For those of you, some of you will know who are following me on Instagram and on um, my, pa my Patreon, uh, that I have been on a bit of hiatus. Um, I'll do an update after I talk about Yarny stuff. Um, but it's really nice to uh, be back and kind of give you a quick update. Um, as I said, I'm in the office. So there's going to be some interesting cropping. Um, uh, yeah, there's there's I, I, there's some student names and things like that in here, so I'm just going to kind of see what it looks like in the edit. Um, and as I'm on my phone, I have to make sure I look at the camera rather than at the screen. So um, this isn't going to be the usual kind of um, podcasty content, but I will talk about Yarny things because um, I have a half finished object. I have finished quite a lot of stuff in the time that I haven't been here, um, mostly teacher gifts, which. I neglected to take pictures of, um, but I made some uh, hand warmers and some little bluebirds and some little gnomes and a uh, knitted donut, which is probably the best thing I've ever made. I did take a picture of that. I will put it up on the screen. Um, best thing ever. That is the um, glazed pattern by Hunter Hansen. She's just brought it out and it is the cleverest thing I've ever made. Um, hard on my hands because it has been at a quite tight gauge, but so much fun. Um, I'm going to be making more of them. <laughs> anyway, um, so first things first, a little bit of admin. You can find me on Instagram as Sophie Swan and also as a Spring Snowflake. Um, I do have a Patreon account which I have just downgraded because I can't, at the moment I just don't have the impetus to create that, that much content. What is this bit of hair doing? I'm going to put it behind my ear. Um, I don't have the impetus to, to create that much content. So all my Patreon um, subscribers have been informed. You can still support the podcast if you wanted to by subscribing. You'll get at least one thing a month if, if it's uh, early access to my podcast or a free pattern. Um, I'll talk a bit more about that in a bit um, and, and so forth. So um, there is still things that you get for supporting the podcast but just not in the tier structure that um, I had before. I may go back to the tiers at one point but at the moment I don't want to create content for the sake of creating content because people are paying me to do it. So that sucks the joy out of everything um, creative that I do so we're not doing that. Um, where else can you find me? There is a Mighty Networks uh, site page for this uh, podcast as well. Um, all the show notes for the podcasts now and previously are on, still on Patreon as a public facing po uh, post. Um, so even if you're not supporting on Patreon, you can go and find out all the details on there. And I think that's it. Uh, there is one along going on at the moment, which is the year long blanket finish along. So it's called Sophie's Blanket F-A-L, finish along. Um, basically that is any blanket that you're doing, whether you start it now or whether you started it 10 years ago, if you finish it in this year, you can post it on the Mighty Networks um, page and also using the Instagram hashtag Sophie's Blanket F-A-L. I think that's what it is. If not, I'll put it down there. Um, and, uh, and you'll be entered to win a prize at the end of the year. I think I am going to draw an interim prize at some point because my prize basket is overflowing right now because I haven't been doing much. Um, so there's lots of nice things for you. Um, that's running until the end of the year. Yes, there will be another along shortly announced that I'm doing as a collaboration, but we haven't quite worked out the details yet. We were gonna do it in July and then things happened for all three of us, um, two other podcasters. I'm very excited, um, but hopefully we might try and get that started on the 1st of August, but we'll be telling you about that nearer the time. Maybe not August, maybe September. Don't know, need to talk to them. Um, I think that's it for admin. Yeah, I'm most active on Instagram. If you want to keep up with me there, that's the place to be. Um, although for the past couple of months, I haven't really been that active. I've started ramping up again, which has been quite nice. So. 
yarny things. Oh, I haven't actually finished my, my needle. So let's do that quickly. So my first whip slash half finished object. I've got five more stitches, so I'm going to, yeah. now I'm gonna look down and finish it while I, anyway. My half, first half finished object is a sock. So um, for those of you who, who've been following me for a while, you know that I've been taking part in Sharon from SCR on TNO's um, Stripey Sock Cal, uh, which is a year long, she started in February, but it finishes in December. Um, and the yarn dyer, she has a few different yarn dyers or commercial sock yarn companies um, each month that are kind of the, the dyer or the, the, the yarn of the month. Um, now I've been trying to keep up in the last couple of months, I haven't managed to, to make those socks, but this month is Laura, who's Lonely Knitter. Um, she owns Bumbling Yarns and uh, she's one of the dyers. And this is my sock. I haven't got the sock blocker obviously because I'm in the, in the office. But yes, this is, let's put it back so you can see it in the light. I've got a weird lighting situation here because I've got two windows here and then this big black thing that you're sitting on the radiator, basically. Anyway, this is her um, self-striping colorway. So it's two, it's a, it's a natural and her, and a yarn, and a yarn, a color. Um, and then uh, there was a matching mini that went with the set. Um, it is a gobstopper ball, so I could only do one sock at a time. This is the ball, there we go, in the light. Um, I think this one was based on Kingfisher colours, which is really lovely. Um, and I will pop a photo of this on the blocker so you can see. What I did, um, I went back to the toe up recipe um, that is on Louise Tilbrook. Tilbrook's website slash pay hip store slash, no, I don't think she sells on Ravelry anymore. No, I don't think she sells on Ravelry anymore. Um, anyway, uh, I've done it magic loop, toe up, uh, wedge toe um, as the pattern, uh, 62 rows for the foot. Then uh, hers is a, it's not a heel flap because obviously you don't do the flap and then the big, but it's a mock heel flap basically um, and gusset. So you increase up to um, the heel turn and then you do um, decreases. Uh, uh, her recipe, you just knit the, the back of the, the sock, but um, I did some, a slip stitch heel which is exactly the same way as you would do it for a heel flap and gusset. You do um, slip one, knit one, slip one, knit one all the way across, and then you purl all the way, purl all the stitches on the way back and it creates the slip stitch. So um, I much prefer a kind of reinforced heel, uh, but, and this yarn was, was lovely to work with. I didn't quite manage to get the stripes completely even. You'll see that this, this stripe is a bit longer. Um, I was trying to work out how to do it with the contrast colour and my brain just wasn't working. So um, I carried on with the heel in the, in the stripe. Um, and then one by one, twisted rib at the top, which was very nice. Um, yeah, so half finished sock. I have started the second sock. I have my little corner of craft uh, beaded um, marker on here, stitch marker on here. And um, I'm just going round and round and round. One of the things at the moment that I need, to, uh, my brain is just not coping with like complicating patterns at the moment, uh, mainly because we just had a heat wave in the UK and um, too hot to think. Um, I am using wooden needles. I'm doing them on Magic Loop. I'm using uh, liquor, li li licky needles um, on this. Um, this is the first time I've used these and um, they're quite springy and I like it. It's nice on my hands. Now I've always been a metal needle girl, always. I've, I am, an, I have been using metal needles because the wooden needles I used first were the Knit Pro Symphonies, which I didn't get on with at all. Um, but these are really nice. So I might, I might get myself, self, I've got some um, DPNs as well. These are on 2.25 millimeter needles. They're just, yeah, they're really nice to, to work with. And I, my hands don't get tired as quickly. Um, so I might, I might, uh, invest in a set or ask for a set for Christmas um, but yes really nice um, to work with so that's my first object and half finished object the other um, thing that I've been working on I actually don't have one in progress right now but balls mini balls of yarn I have been using the mini skein club um, from Giddy Yarns this is the March these are two of the March there's five colours I get the 10 gram blanket pack which is a four gram no, a four ply 
10 gram five mini skeins pack um, every uh, month. It's Helen calls it her Malthus Monthly Minis uh, Club and they're, they're similar colourways so March was kind of a peachy going from kind of um, pinks into peaches and I think the next month is orange. Um, so I've been doing a, you'll, people who've seen the, the podcast before will have seen my granny square blanket that I started with Helen's advent calendar and then with the 12 days of Christmas um, collaboration box that she did with 11 other dyers um, and now I'm adding on this month's mini, uh, mini skeins and when I'm caught up with that I'll start doing the granny squares for last year's mini skein club which was her nostalgia club. Um, so it's going to be a massive um, blanket. I will show you the progress that I've made so far on the picture. Um, but that's just been lovely. Um, I am doing it on a 3.5 mil hook. These are my clover armor hooks, which I absolutely love. They are um, ergonomic and fabulous. And again, my hands don't hurt when I'm grannying away. And those are basically the two things that I've been doing this month. Like uh, with the heat and the um, and the things that I will tell you about in a minute, um, my brain just can't really cope with a lot of thinking. Um, I have, uh, I did take a project away on holiday with us, we went to Wales for three nights, four days, um, as a kind of little family holiday for the first time since um, pandemic. Obviously we're still in pandemic, but things are opening up. Um, and uh, that was really nice. And I took away a project, which was the um, strawberry lemonade shawl by uh, Gemma of the Midnight Diary from her cozy box. I used the yarn. Um, I'll put the photo. Um, she's released that in, she's releasing that in two parts. So part one came with the box and part two is going to be shortly released once she's finished it. So um, that's been quite a nice thing to kind of pick up, get that part one done as a holiday project. And I did manage to get it done uh, pretty much. I think I finished it the night we came home, part one anyway. Um, so that had some simple lace. Um, yeah, it was kind of a simple lace and garter. So it's been quite a nice, a nice, um, a nice shawl to work on. Um, but yeah, other than that, it's just been grannies and, and vanilla knitting. Um, so um, what I will do, I'll just move on, is to tell you a little bit about what's going on with me. Um, so I can't remember the last time I podcasted, early May, maybe? Um, and I had my birthday. And on my birthday, on my actual birthday, which was a bit awful, um, I had a pretty bad mental health breakdown. Um, I think it had been growing for a while. I've been getting more and more um, down and despondent. Um, and uh, for those of you who haven't been around for a while, um, I was diagnosed, well, diagnosed, self-diagnosed, and then supported by my healthcare professionals um, with depression and anxiety uh, two years ago and it, that had been building for a while um, so I've been having therapy um, exercising getting out lots of fresh air all that kind of stuff that that GPs tell you to do um, and it worked to some extent but wasn't really it was giving me coping mechanisms but wasn't uh, wasn't allowing me to kind of my brain to reset and stuff so um, after that breakdown on my birthday, I uh, went to the GP, or rather filled in an e-consult form and had a phone call with my GP, who is awesome, he's fabulous, um, and uh, we made the decision to go on pills. So I am now taking antidepressants and they have been a revelation. <laughs> but obviously there's been some time for bedding in and kind of working out how my body's doing. Um, I'm a lot happier. Uh, I can. Feel, I feel a lot more positive. I still have my down moments, but those down moments are nowhere near as hideous as the lows were pre-antidepressants. Um, um, I'm sleeping better. I'm, I'm still anxious, but I'm far less anxious than I was. Um, I'm feeling very positive and, and energized as well. Um, but kind of the bedding in process and kind of um, working out the new normal hilariously has taken away any mojo for a lot of creativity, um, which is fine. Everyone has dips. Uh, 
but yeah, so that's that's what's been going on with me and, and it kind of took away all my want to podcast, um, which I'm coming back to. Didn't want to um, engage in social media. Um, I basically disappeared from Instagram for a month. Um, like every sort of thing going in, looking at stories, reposting some things, but that's about it. My grid was pretty empty. So I'm getting back to it now. I'm getting back to a kind of even keel, um, which has been really nice. Uh, and starting to get back into it, I, um, the cosy box that I mentioned earlier, um, Gemma commissioned me to uh, design um, a shawl for the, or the crochet pattern for that, for that box, and I did, and it's with the, uh, obviously it's gone to the people who bought the cosy box, and it will be released toward middle of, toward middle to end of August, um, but I will show you a picture now. Um, so this is the Budding Into Bloom shawl. It is a one skein shawl um, with lace and um, texture as well. I'm really happy with it. My testers were amazing. Um, just, yeah, fabulous, fabulous group of testers who came up with a lot of little issues that I had put in with writing them, but that's what testing's for. Um, it was tech edited by the lovely Linda, who is Linda's Yarn Therapy um, on Instagram, um, which was fab. And yeah, so it's gone out to the cosy box and it will be released at the middle to end of August, which is quite cool. I want to give some time for them to have exclusive use and then and then I'll release it um, onto my Payhip store and my Lovecrafts um, store. Uh, so that's that. Um, I have been commissioned to do one, potentially two, there's still, there's still a, a bit up in the air about uh, whether that particular thing is going to be uh, written in, in the works um, for Christmas. So I've got one definite crochet design that I've been um, commissioned to do for Christmas and then maybe another, um, which is really cool. And then I've got some other ideas as well. So the designing thing is is like, mm, it's going on in the background, which is quite nice. Um, other than that, we're fine. Like we went on a lovely family holiday. It's now the summer holiday. So Amelia is off school. This is week three of eight that she's off. Um, Chris is, Chris is off this week with her and then she'll have two weeks of summer camp and then a week and a half with me because I'll have a week, a week and a half off work and then she's got some time with her grandmother and then time with her other grandmother <laughs> so yeah we've managed to sort kind of childcare so both of us don't have to take too much time off work uh, for the eight week holiday. Um, I'm seeing friends, uh, it's been really nice to see some friends in person again. We had a lovely barbecue with some local friends and, and kids recently. Um, Amelia and I have been down to Kent, um, which is where I'm from, um, to see my mum and my uh, my brother and the dog, because we love Jasper. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm aunt, I'm a fur baby aunt. <laughs> um, but yes, the cousins. Uh, Amelia and Jasper get on very well there. She was quite scared of him um, to start with because he was a puppy and liked to jump, but now he's getting a little bit older and a little bit more sensible and uh, he's very good. And that's me. Um, just a quick update, just to tell you how I am. There's noise outside. <laughs> and, um, and I hope you are all doing well. Uh, it's it's been a nice summer so far, but the heat wave last week and the week before have just, just knocked it out of me. I was incredibly warm. Oh, the other thing I'm doing is I'm doing a running challenge at the moment for Great Ormond Street Hospital, uh, which is 31K in July. And technically the challenge is to run one kilometre a day in July, but what I'm doing is um, using it to get back into Couch to 5K. Um, one of my uh, 40 before li 40 list, I will be 40 in three years time. Um, is to complete the Couch to 5k uh, challenge and I'm using this kind of sponsored challenge to do it so uh, there's been some people who sponsored me thank you very much um, I'm still a little way to go to my 150 pound target but yes um, that I'm doing at the moment which is good I'm on week four of Couch to 5k um, doing that in the humidity and the heat has not been fun but if I can do it when it's hot, it means I can do it when it's cooler. So yeah, so that's how, how I'm doing at the moment. Um, the exercise is, is, is good. It's good for me to get out and breathe the fresh air and all that kind of jazz. So I'm gonna go. Thank you so much for watching this very, very short podcast. I, it's not quite 20 minutes. <laughs> and I'll see you very soon with slightly more content and probably not in the office. Bye guys. <laughs>